Hello everybody and welcome to Magic the Gathering Arena with me, Dark Mazda, for Dark Mazda Series Gaming. The new set has dropped, The Brothers War, uh, in which the heroes are travelling to the past, or observing the past, in order to figure out a way to defeat the Phyrexians in the present day. Now, um, as far as I'm aware, Teferi um, creates a time machine of sorts. Uh, which sends his soul um, into the past to the Brothers' War in order to observe um, how they thwarted the Phyrexians in the past in order to do the same in the present day. And I think it's got a lot to do with how the Silex is uh, activated. Anyway, we are going to start off this new series um, with this new set by um, spending our common uh, wild cards and our uncommon wild cards. Um, everybody should be doing this before they open their packs. Um, basically, yep, um, it's so that you can fill up the vault and potentially get some more rare wild cards and mythic rare wild cards. So in order to do this, if you just go over to your decks, Um, and then just click on this plus here now basically what you want to do or um, I've already got four of the new cards because I've um, ordered pre or well I got the pre-order bundles so we've got the Phyrexian Dragon Engine and um, Urza Lord Protector Mishra claimed by Gix and the Might Stone and Weak Stone so two of these um, are meld cards so um, you which one is it um so yeah so urza lord protector has to be on the field and the might stone and weak stone and then you can transform into urza the planeswalker and look at all those abilities we'll be going over those in detail in a moment so basically what we were going to be doing is we were going to be spending our commons and our uncommon wild cards um so we're going to click not collected and we're going to click brothers war and we're going to put common, uncommon, and we're just going to hit OK. And hopefully that's going to bring up everything here in the Brothers War. And we're just literally going to go from left to right until all of our wild cards have gone. Um, sorry, I've done that wrong. Um, we've got to click the craft button here. And then we're going to just craft four of everything until we've got no wild cards left. And... Obviously, if we draw duplicates while we are opening packs, um, it will add to our it will add to our vault progress. So that's going to be good. Um, and yeah, potentially we get some rare and mythic rare wild cards, which is always handy. And also, it will help us fill out the rest of our collection. Um, once all of our packs have been opened and um, we do get 50 packs for one of the pre-order bundles so that's uh, quite handy I do that every month uh, well not every month but every time they release a new set um, because you know you get a lot of wild cards from them as well so if there's any decks that you see on the uh, internet for instance or you're following the meta um, decks that you can find on the untap.gg companion app um it's you know you can just craft the cards that you need um relatively easy um i'm going to hopefully complete this set and then we can showcase quite a lot of the new decks that tend to pop up um due in the meta i'm going to do we're going to basically in this series we're going to um, look at what the meta decks are um, which obviously it isn't listed here but when we're on the home page we can see what the meta is we can refer to the website and we can um, then start crafting the top I think it's 10 decks is it 10 decks I think it's eight on eight or nine decks and we'll test them out and see what they like because we'll have all the cards and um, we've pretty much got all the cards from the previous set as well so you know that's 
cool beans. And we've got a good pool of cards to choose from. And then we can have some fun with Magic the Gathering Arena and see how far we can make it through the ranked ladder. Um, well, having a lot of fun. I mean, like you say, if you're not having fun, then what are you doing playing, you know? Um, you should be having fun if you're playing this game. It's not a rage-inducing game, although sometimes it can feel that way. But here we go. We're getting quite a lot of um, decent cards here. Just filling out our commons and uncommons. We're moving on to blue cards soon, I would have thought. And as soon as we run out, we will... Oh, press the wrong button there. Yeah, as soon as we run out, that is when we will start opening packs. And then we will read through some of the cards, um, as we normally do. And just see what they do. And maybe just have a little... Ch well, a little... Um, think about what will be handy where in each deck. Um, yeah, so let's get this done. Some new mechanics in this set, um, some of that being prototypes, so we can um, use a less mana cost in order to bring a creature onto the battlefield. Um, but it's slightly weaker than what it would be if you cast it for its full cost. And also there's an Unearth ability. Uh, see, there's that prototype ability there. Um, if we also unearth something, if something dies, we can bring it back from the graveyard. I think it gets sacrificed after the... After the first turn, if you unearth something. It's like a kind of like a last stand, as as they say. So we can only craft three of these. So we've only got the the commons there. Um, right. Let's see if we can find the uncommons. We'll only do two of these. Right. So there we are. We've got a little bit into the blue cards there. Okay. So. We've used all of our common and uncommon cards. Let's just um, save and exit. Oh, okay. Invalid deck. Yeah, whatever. So we have got 50 Brothers War Packs and 5 Golden Packs. Now, I'm going to um, just basically um, buy some more gems so that I can buy some more... Uh, brothers war cards so we're going to be back just after this short break so here we are guys we have bought um the 90 pack deal from the shop um and basically we got um some more brothers card uh, brothers war cards um also when you buy packs or with gold or with whatever every so often you get a gold pack and um, I think it's for every 10 that you get so anyway we're going to start opening these brothers war packs and we're going to open what is it 170 in total so these will give us any kind of rares and I think it's mythics in that's currently legal in standard uh, apparently we have got um, 12.6% of the Brothers War cards already, um, which I think is wrong because we haven't opened anything yet. But anyway, we're going to start opening them one by one, see what we get. So, let's take a look. We will read the ones that are uh, not firsts as well because obviously we just went through those with the common and the uncommon um, wild cards. So, anyway, we've got Thraxodemon. Um, for three we can tap it, sacrifice another creature or artifact and draw a card, that's for a 2-2. Two -two. We've got Calamity's Wake, exile all graveyards, players can't cast non-creature spells this turn, exile Calamity's Wake. That sounds pretty sweet, good against um, control decks I would have thought. Um, Goring Warplow, 
for six. A prototype cost one and a black. We can uh, summon it for a one one. Prototype, you may cast a spell with different mana cost, colour, power and toughness. It keeps its abilities and types. Um, it's got death touch. Um, if we cast it for six, um, it comes in as a five four. Uh, we've got giant growth for one forest target creature gets plus three plus three until the end of the turn we've got recommission return target artifact or creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield if a creature enters the battlefield this way it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it the temporal anchor at the beginning of your upkeep, scry two. Whenever you choose to put one or more cards on the bottom of your library while scrying, exile that many cards from the bottom of your library. During your turn, you may play cards exiled with the temporal and. Well, apologies for um, that little mess up there for some reason the computer didn't like what i was doing and uh, we were talking about the temporal anchor which is what teferi uh, uses to send his soul back into the past to observe the brothers war in order to find the um, answer to taking out the phyrexians in the present day and um, i don't know what the rare card was in that um pack opening there but um i'm sure that we will come across it again so anyway, we have also got a Mine Worker. You gain one life if you control creatures named Power Plant Worker and Tower Worker. You gain three life instead. I'm guessing we can make an Artifact Creature deck as well. Um, Hulking Metamorph for nine. Wow. Uh, prototype for three. Uh, sorry, for two and two blue. Um, you may have Hulking Metamorph enter the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact creature in addition to its other types, and its power and toughness are equal to Hulking Metamorph's power and toughness. Wow. Power Plant Worker. Alright, so that goes along with the Mine Worker. Uh, for three, Power Plant Worker gets plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. If you control creatures named Mine Worker and Tower Worker, Put two 1 plus 1 counters on Power Plant Worker instead. Activate only once each turn. We've got Tower Worker, so that's the third one. Um, it's got Reach. Um, tap to add a colourless mana. If you control creatures named Mine Worker and Power Plant Worker, add three colourless mana instead. Lovely. Perimeter Patrol. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Perimeter Patrol gets plus 1 plus 0 until the end of the turn. We've also got uh, Maze Mind Tome, which is put a page counter on Maze Mind Tome, scry one, put a page counter on Maze Mind Tome, draw a card. When there are four or more page counters on Maze Mind Tome, exile it. If you do, you'll gain four life. This is one of the old border cards, which um, is good, because look at that, it's rare. It's like, yeah, that's pretty decent. Obstinate Baloth. When Obstinate Baloth enters the battlefield, you'll gain four life. If a spell or an ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Obstinate Baloth, put it into the battle, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. And we also get a rare wild card. Great. So we'll keep opening one pack at a time until we get to the point where we don't have any firsts, and then we'll just keep opening ten packs. So we got Latnam Adept. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Latnam Adept. Alloy Animist, for two and a forest until the end of the turn, target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 4-4 four, four artifact creature. We've got a common wildcard, we've got an Energy Refractor, um, it's an artifact, when Energy Refractor enters the battlefield draw a card, and for two mana we can add one mana of any colour. Recommission, return target artifact or creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If a creature enters the battlefield this way, it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Also got a Rune Chanter's Pike. Equipped creature has first strike and gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. An equipped cost of two. Lovely. We've also got an uncommon wild card. Uh, one with the multiverse, an enchantment. It's a mythic. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand. 
or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. Lovely. I can see that being um, a bit of a nasty card. Let's have a look. Fog of War. You gain one life for each creature on the battlefield. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures with power 3 or less. Repair and recharge. Return target artifact, enchantment or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Create a tapped power stone token. Nile root. Pall bearer. Pall bearer. Tra it's got trample. When Nile root pall bearer enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus X plus X until the end of the turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Gaia's gift. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Gains reach, trample, hexproof and indestructible until the end of the turn. Union of the third path. Draw a card, then you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Got a platoon dispenser. It's a mythic. At the beginning of your end step, if you control two or more other creatures, draw a card. And for three and a white mana, create a 1-1 one, one colourless soldier artifact creature token. And we're going to unearth it for a cost of two and two planes. And demolition field. It's a land. And tap to add a colourless mana. And for two mana we can tap. Sacrifice demolition field. Destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. Lovely. That land's controller may search our library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield then shuffle. You may search your library for a basic land card. Put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. So this reminds me of Field of Ruin. Um, we can basics check the opponent. Um, if they don't have any basic lands, they're effectively um, missing out on um, a mana. So if we could have Field of Ruin and Demolition Fields in our deck at the same time, that would be a pretty uh, decent land destruction deck going on there. Helm of the Host. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equip creature, except the token isn't legendary, that token gains haste. Equip 5. Wow. Lovely. Overwhelming Remorse. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. Exile target creature or planeswalker. Falaji Dragon Engine. Uh, it's a prototype for two and a mountain and it comes in as a one three and it'll have flying um Falaji dragon engine gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn for a cost of two mana um if we cast it for eight we do does come in as a five five desynchronize target non-land permanent owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library scry two Mishra's Onslaught. Choose one. Create two 1-1 one, one colourless soldier artifact creature tokens. Or creatures you control get plus two plus zero until the end of the turn. Stone Retrieval Unit. An artifact creature construct. When Stone Retrieval Unit enters the battlefield, create a tap power stone token. We've also got Swift Foot Boots. Equipped creature has hexproof and haste. An equipped cost of one. We also have Symmetry Matrix for a cost of 4. Uh, whenever a creature with power equal to its toughness enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 1. If you do, draw a card. And we've also got Blast Zone, which is a land. Uh, Blast Zone enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it. You can tap to add a colourless mana. And for X, X, we can also tap, put X charge counters on Blast Zone. Uh, for 3 mana we can tap as well, uh, sacrifice it, uh, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value equal to the number of charge counters on Blast Zone. Well that sounds like a mouthful, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to figure out something to do with that one. We've already seen Union of the Third Path so we will not go over that again. And we've seen Falaji Dragon Engine. Um, we've got Kill Zone Acrobat. Whenever Kill Zone Acrobat attacks, you may sacrifice another creature or artifact. If you do, Kill Zone Acrobat gains flying until end of turn. It's a 3 2. Uh, Ravenous Gigamole. 
It's a Maul Horror. When Ravenous Gigamaul enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a creature card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Ravenous Gigamaul. Gigamaul, sorry. Ambush Paratrooper. We can flash this in. So flash means you can cast a spell um, anytime you could cast an instant. It's got flying and for five mana, we, uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. We've got Ashnod, Flesh Mechanist, Legendary Creature, Human Artificer, um, Death Touch. Whenever Ashnod attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, create a tapped Power Stone token. Uh, for five, we can exile a creature card from our graveyard and create a tapped 3-3 three, three Colorless Zombie Artifact creature token. We've got a Thran Power Suit, Artifact Equipment. A quick creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it and has ward two and a quick cost of two. We've also got a Keening Stone for six. Um, for five mana we can tap. Target player mills X cards where X is the number of cards in that player's graveyard. Lovely, that would be a nice one for a mill deck. got Mishra's Judgment, Juggernaut, sorry, for five. Um, it's Trample. Uh, Mishra's Juggernaut attacks each combat if able. An unearth cost for six. Well, it's five and a mountain. And it's a five, three. Yep, so it has to attack each turn. Floor of Knowledge, instant. Uh, draw a card for each island you control, then discard two cards. We've got another common wild card. Conscripted Infantry. When Conscripted Infantry dies, create a 1-1 one, one Colourless Soldier Artifact Creature Token. Be good for the um, the aggro deck. Air Marshal. For 3 mana, target soldier gains flying until the end of the turn. Got Ivory Tower. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life, where X is the number of cards in your hand, minus 4. Skyfisher Spider. It's got reach. When Skyfisher Spider enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. When Skyfisher Spider dies, you may gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. If you do, exile Skyfisher Spider from your graveyard. We also got Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard, Legendary Creature Human Soldier. Sacrifice Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard. Legendary creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain indestructible until the end of the turn. So where are we at here? So we've seen to Kaiser Onulet. Uh, when it leaves the battlefield, you gain two life. Loran, Disciple of History. Whenever Loran, Disciple of History, or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Blanchwood Prowler, Elemental Creature. When it enters the battlefield, we mill three cards. You may put a land card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, put a plus one, plus one counter on Blanchwood Prowler. We've seen Union of the Third Path. Um, Yotian Medic, it's got lifelink, it's a 1-4, says what it does on the tin. Sigil of Valor, whenever a quick creature attacks alone, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn for each other creature you control, equip 1. We've got the Fall of Krug, choose target opponent, destroy target land that player controls, the Fall of Krug deals 3 damage to that player and 1 damage to each creature they control. So we can destroy more land. So I can see this being in um, a field of ruin and a land of demolition deck. So that would be pretty sweet. Was it a land of demolition? I can't remember. Um, Faithful handoff. Draw cards equal to the mana value of target artifact or creature you control. An opponent gains control of that permanent. Wow. Nice. Shoot down, exile target artifact, enchantment or creature with flying. Mishra's research desk for one. Uh, we can tap, sacrifice Mishra's research desk, exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. And we can unearth it for one and a mountain. 
Evolving Wilds. Sacrifice Evolving Wilds, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield top, then shuffle. Yep, we like the Evolving Wilds. Whirling Strike, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains first strike and trample until the end of the turn. Disenchant, destroy target artifact or enchantment. We've got an uncommon wild card, and we've got an ornithopter. Flying, it's a zero two artifact creature. We can cast that for zero, apparently. Uh, Herkel, Master Wizard, for one and two islands. It's a legendary creature, human wizard advisor. The beginning of your end step, if you've cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among non-creature spells you've cast this turn, you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So what else we've got? Military Discipline. We can flash it in. We can enchant the creature. When Military Discipline enters the battlefield, enchant the creature gains first strike until the end of the turn, and it gets plus one plus zero. Lay down arms. Exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control. It's controlled against three life. We've seen a Latin Am Adept. Uh, Rock Hunter. It's got reach. It's a three one. Falnax. Phalanx Vanguard, um, it's got Vigilance, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn. Uh, Titania's Command, choose two, exile target player's graveyard, you gain one life for each card exiled this way. Um, search your library for up to two land cards, put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Create two, 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 green bear creature tokens, or put two... Plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control. That's a pretty strong card, isn't it? Arms race. For three and a mountain, you may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. That artifact gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. We've also got Phyrexian Processor. As Phyrexian Processor enters the battlefield, pay any amount of life. For four, we can tap. Create an XX Black Phyrexian Minion Creature Token, where X is the life paid as Phyrexian Processor entered the battlefield. We've seen Perimeter Control, we've seen Calamity's Wake, we've got a Swift Gear Drake, Flying in Haste, when it enters the battlefield put up to one target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Power Stone Engineer, we've seen that as well. We've got Burnished Heart. For three, sacrifice Burnished Heart. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. We've seen an Obstinate Baloth as well. We've got Geeks' Command. Choose two. Put two plus one plus one counters on up to one creature. It gains lifelink until the end of the turn. Destroy each creature with power two or less. Or return up to two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Or each opponent sacrifices a creature with the highest power among creatures they control. Urza's Rebuff. Choose one counter target spell or tap up to two target creatures. We've seen, uh, have we seen the Yot Yotian Frontliner? Another target creature you control gets plus one plus one, and it's an unearth cost of one planes. Argothian Opportunist, Human Scout, when it enters the battlefield, create a tap power stone token. Goblin Blast Runner, Goblin Blast Runner gets plus two plus zero, and has menace as long as you sacrifice the permanent this turn. Also got Tokasia's Dig Site, it's a land, tap to add a colorless mana. And for three, we can tap and surveil one. And surveil is look at the top cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in any order. Soul Guide Lantern. Enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. We can tap, uh, sacrifice Soul Guide Lantern, exile each opponent's graveyard. Or for one, we can tap, sacrifice Soul Guide Lantern, draw a card. Thran Vigil. Whenever one or more artifact and or creature cards leave your graveyard during your turn, 
put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. We've also got a rare wild card. Lovely. So what have we got? We've seen Latinam Adept. Iron Claw Crusher for seven. Prototype cost of two and two forest, and it comes in as a two five. Whenever Iron Craw Crusher attacks, target attacking creature gets plus X plus zero until X end of turn where x is iron craw crushes power or we can cast it for seven and it comes in as a four six gix's caress target opponent reveals their hand you choose a non land card from it that player discards that card create a tap power stone token got dredging claw equipped creature gets plus one plus zero and has menace whenever a creature enters the battlefield from your graveyard you may attach dread Dredging Claw to it, equip one and a swamp. Warlords Elite, additional cost to cast this spell. Tap two untapped artifact creatures and or lands you control. We've got a Chromatic Star. Sacrifice Chromatic Star, add one manner of any colour. When Chromatic Star is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Corrupt. Corrupt deals damage to any target equal to the number of swamps you control. You gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. And we also get another Hajar Loyal Bodyguard, which we have seen before. The Scrapwork Rager. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. It's got an unearth cost of three and a swamp. Gears Cursor. Corsair, sorry. Um, Centaur Soldier. Whenever Gears Corsair attacks, there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard. Draw a card. We've had an Energy Refractor. Um, Falaji Archaeologist. When it enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a non creature, non land card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. You don't want to put a plus one, plus one counter on the Archaeologist. Depth Charge Colossus. For a prototype cost of 4 and 2 island, comes in as a 6-6. Six, six. Um, depth Charge Colossus doesn't untap during your untap step. Um, for 3 mana, we can untap Depth Charge Colossus. And um, for a cost of 9 mana, it can come in as a 9-9. Nine, nine. Sage Veteran, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target creature you control. Whenever another non-token soldier you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one colourless soldier artifact creature token. Yotian Tactician. Other soldiers you control get plus 1, plus 1. We've also got Ramos Dragon Engine for 6. Flying. Um, whenever you cast a spell, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Ramos Dragon Engine for each of that spell's colours. Remove 5 plus 1, plus 1 counters from Ramos. Add two plains, two islands, two swamps, two mountains, two forests. Activate only once each turn. Wow, that's a nasty card. We've seen Phalanx Vanguard. Uh, forging the Anchor. So this is the Anchor, which is the um, kind of time machine that Teferi uses. Um, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of artifact cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Excavation Explosion. It deals three damage to any target. Create a tapped power stone token. Sibling Rivalry. Gain control of target artifact or creature until the end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste until the end of the turn. Create a tapped power stone token. Veteran's Power Blade, um, it's an artifact equipment, equipped creature, it gets plus two, plus zero, um, equip soldier for a planes, um, or we can equip for um, two generic mana. Simeon Simulacrum, um, when Simeon Simulacrum enters the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, and we can unearth it for two and two forests uncommon wild card and we also got another maze mind tome so we got a phalagi chain dancer 
Gains double strike until the end of the turn for two mana. We've also got a static net. Enters the battlefield. Exile target non-land permanent. And opponent controls until static net leaves the battlefield. Um, when static net enters the battlefield, you gain two life and create a tap power stone token. We've got a common wild card. We've got a wing commando. Flying and prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one plus one until the end of the turn. We've seen military discipline. Self assembler. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an assembly worker creature card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Got audacity. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has trample. When audacity is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. And we've got the temporal anchor. So the one we were looking at before um, when the uh, computer decided that it didn't like the recording software for whatever reason. The beginning of your upkeep, scry 2. Whenever you choose to put one or more cards on the bottom of your library while scrying, exile that many cards from the bottom of your library. During your turn, you may play cards exiled with the temporal anchor. Lovely. So we've had Latinam Adept. Uh, defabricate counter target artifact or enchantment spell if a spell is counted this way exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard or counter target activated or triggered ability um, emergency weld return target artifact or creature card from your graveyard to your hand create a 1-1 one -one colorless soldier artifact creature token got scrap work mutt an artifact creature dog when it enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. And it's got an unearth cost of one and a mountain. Wasteful Harvest. Mill five cards. You may put a permanent card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. Liquid, liquid Metal Cordon. So tap, we can tap it. Target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until the end of the turn. Levitating Statue. For two, it's comes in flying whenever you cast a non-creature spell put a plus one plus one counter on levitating statue for two mana levitating statue becomes a one one construct artifact creature until the end of the turn and we get misery shadow if a creature and opponent controls would die exile it instead and for one mana misery shadow gets plus one plus one until the end of the turn seen rock hunter we've got transmogrant altar for a swamp we can tap sacrifice a creature and add three colorless mana and um, for two we can tap sacrifice a creature create a three three colorless zombie artifact creature token activate only as a sorcery um, retrieval agent for two mana retrieval agent gets plus one minus one until end of turn uh, Thraxodemon, we've seen that one. We've seen this Vanguard. Uh, Symmetry Matrix, whenever a creature with power equal to its toughness enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, draw a card. And we've got a Pristine Talisman. Tap to add colourless mana, you gain one life. Blast Zone enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it. Tap to add a colourless mana. Um, we've seen this one uh, previously. So we've got Sibling Rivalry, which we've seen. Junkyard Genius. Uh, when Junkyard Genius enters the battlefield, create a tap power stone token. For one, a swamp and a mountain. Sacrifice another creature or artifact until the end of turn. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain menace and haste. We've got a Hoarding Recluse. It's got Reach and Death Touch. When it dies, put up to one other target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Gixian Infiltrator, whenever you sacrifice another permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on Gixian Infiltrator. We've seen the Nal Root Palbera. Cradle Clear Cutter, prototype, cost of two and a forest, um, it comes in as a one three. We can tap and add an amount of forest equal to Cradle Clear Cutter's power. Um, if we cast it for six, it comes in as a three six. We've got another liquid metal coating. Uh, Teresian Mindbreaker. Artifact creature juggernaut. Whenever Teresian Mindbreaker 
Attacks defending player mills half their library rounded up. Wow. That's pretty decent. I think they're going back for a mill dex as a, as a main focus. And um, we're going to unearth it for one and three islands as well. So we can cast it again. A carrion locust. When carrion locust enters the battlefield, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it was a creature card, that player loses one life. We've already seen forging the anchor. Mishra's domination. Enchant creature. As long as you control enchanted creature it gets plus two plus two otherwise it can't block we've seen gix's caress uh, perimeter control we've got spring leaf drum tap and untap creature you control add one mana of any color involuntary cooldown tap up to two target artifacts and all creatures put two stun counters on each of them we also got legions to ashes for one a plains and a swamp Exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all tokens that player controls with the same name as that permanent. <laughs> wow. We're getting to the point now where we're getting less firsts. We've got a Rust Goliath. Prototype cost of 3 and 2 forests. Comes in as a 3-5. It's a Reach and Trample. It's got Reach and Trample. Um, if we cast it for 10, it comes in as a 10-10. Well, that's really mad. Um, Hulking Metamorph for nine. Uh, we've seen that earlier on. Um, yeah, it comes in the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or creature we control, except it's an artifact creature in addition to its other types, and its power and toughness are equal to Hulking Metamorph's power and toughness. Uh, common Wild Card, Ravenous Gigamole, we've seen. Stern Lesson, it's an instant. Draw two cards and discard a card. Create a tap power stone token. Got a millstone. Target player mills two cards. We've got Urza, Lord Protector. <clears throat> so we have already got this card, but we did not read through what its abilities were. So, um, legendary creature, human artificer. Artifact, instant and sorcery spells you cast. Cost one less to cast. For seven, if you both own and control Urza, Lord Protector, and an artifact named the Mightstone and Weakstone, which we've also got, and um, exile them, then meld them into Urza Planeswalker, activate only as a sorcery. So when it does meld, becomes the legendary Planeswalker Urza with um, loyalty of seven, and it says you may activate the loyalty abilities of Urza Planeswalker twice each turn, rather than only once. For plus two, Artifact, instant and sorcery spells you cast this turn, cost two less to cast, you gain two life. For plus one, draw two cards, then discard a card. And for zero, create two one one colour the soldier artifact creature tokens. For minus three, exile target non land permanent. And if you can get it up to ten, minus ten, artifacts and planeswalkers you control, gain indestructible until end of turn, destroy all non land permanents. Wow, that's uh, what a card that is. Lovely. So we've seen Depth Charge Colossus and Frontliner Burring Razor When it dies, mill four cards. Um, Power Plant Worker, we've seen that. Um, it gets plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. Disenchant, we've got Jalem Tome. For two, we can tap, draw a card, then discard a card. Bushwhack. We get to choose one. Search our library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Put it in our hand, then shuffle. Our target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Skitterbeam Battalion for nine mana. Um, its prototype cost is three and two mountains, and it comes in as a two-two. It's got Trample and Haste. And when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, create two tokens that are copies of it. Comes in as a 4-4 four, four if you cast it for its 9 cost. So here we go. This is where we're starting to um, get through the ones that we've already seen. Uh, mass production, create 4 1-1 one, one color soldier artifact creature tokens. I can't remember seeing that one before. Uh, Bone Saw for zero. 
equip creature gets plus one plus zero equip cost of one tyrant of Kerr ridge ridges it's a dragon flying when enters the battlefield it deals four damage to any target for a mountain a tyrant of Kerr ridges gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn Recommission, we've seen that. Um, Ashnod's Harvester for two. Um, it's an artifact creature construct. Whenever it attacks, exile target card from a graveyard and it's got an unearth cost of one and a swamp. We've seen Burring Razor Moor. Argothian Sprite can't be blocked by artifact creatures. For seven, put two plus one plus one counters on Argothian Sprite. Lauren's Escape. Target artifact or creature gains hexproof and indestructible until the end of the turn. We've got a burnished heart, which we've seen. Um, third path iron clast, a human monk. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, create a 1 1 colorless soldier artifact creature token. Sky Strike Officer, flying. Whenever it attacks, create a 1 1 colorless soldier artifact creature token. Tap 3 untapped soldiers you control, draw a card. So far we've got 25% of the collection. Um, we've seen the Gigamole. Horn Stone Seeker. It's got Menace. When it enters the battlefield, create a tap power stone token. When it leaves the battlefield, sacrifice a power stone. Aeronaut Wings. Equipped creature gets plus one plus zero and has flying. Bitter Reunion. When Bitter Reunion enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, draw two cards. For one, sacrifice bit reunion. Creatures you control gain haste until the end of the turn. Got another burnished heart. The fall of Krug we've seen. Uh, Razorlash Transmogrant. Uh, artifact creature zombie. Can't block. Four and two swamps. Return from your graveyard to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. This ability costs four less to activate if an opponent controls four more non-basic lands. That's a 3-1. We've got Clear Revenant. Uh, cl enters the battlefield tapped for 2 and a Swamp. Return from the graveyard to your hand. Power Stone Fracture. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Um, let's have a look. Lanawar Wastes, so it's um, oh, it's one of the other pain lands. Tapped add colourless, add swamp or forest, it deals one damage to you. Reconstructed Thopter, flying, and it's also got an unearth, so once it dies we can bring it back. Thorn of Amethyst, non-creature spells cost one more to cast. Take flight, enchant creature gets plus one plus zero. That's flying, and whenever this creature attacks, draw a card. Got scatter ray, counter target artifact or creature spell unless its controller pays four. Third path savant, and um, for seven mana, draw two cards. And um, what else have we got? So we've got sky strike officer again. Perilous vault, and um, exile perilous vault, exile all non land permanents. Got Monastery Swift Spear, it's got Haste and Prowess. I'm sure we've read that one before. Never mind. Go for the Throat, destroy target non artifact creature. We've had the Jalem Tome. We've got a Mythic Rare Wild Card. Blitz Automaton, prototype for two and a mountain comes in as 3 2 it's got haste uh, for the 7 cost it comes in as a 6 4 We've seen audacity air marshal gears gift guy's gift sorry rock hunter we've seen ivory tower at the beginning of your game you gain x life whereas X yeah we've seen that one before spectrum sentinel protection from multicolored whenever a non-basic land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control you gain one life 
Autonomous Assembler. Prototype cost of one in the planes for 2-2. Two, two. It's got Vigilance, and for one, we can tap it and put a plus one, plus one, counter on target assembly worker you control. Uh, Goring war, war plow. I think we've seen that. Pyric blast. As a additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Pyric blast deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. Draw a card. Um, Koilos rock. It's got flash and flying. When it enters the battlefield, create a tap power stone. We've seen energy refractor. Uh, Swift Foot Boots, we've seen them too. Uh, Falaji Dragon Engine, we've seen that as well. What have we got here? Cityscape Leveller. Uh, it's got Trample. When you cast this spell and whenever Cityscape Leveller attacks, destroy up to one target, non-land permanent. Its controller creates a top power stone token. And it's got an unearth cost of 8 as well, so we can bring that back. Combat Courier, Monastery Swift Spear, Tornos is Tinkering, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target, artifact, creature or land you control, untap that permanent, if it isn't a creature it becomes a 0, zero creature in addition to its other types. Goblin Firebomb, artifact, flash, for 7 we can tap it, um, we can sacrifice it and destroy target permanent. Uh, self Assembler, we've also got Yotian. Dissident. Um, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. We've got the Stasis Coffin, legendary artifact. Uh, for two, we can tap it. Exile the Stasis Coffin. You gain protection from everything until your next turn. Protection from everything. Wow. Mishra Onslaught, Thopter Architect. Uh, Gixian Skull Flare. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on Gixian Skull Flare. Weak Stones Subjugation. Enchant Artifact or Creature. When Weak Stones Subjugation ends the battlefield, you may pay three. If you do, tap Enchanted Permanent and doesn't untap during its controls untap step. Uh, when it leaves the battlefield, you gain two life. Involuntary cooldown we've seen, we've seen Burnished Heart, and we've got a rare wild card. So we've seen these, we've got Tomacul Honor Guard, Ward of Two, it's a 3 1 human soldier. Uh, we've seen Liquid Metal Corton, Ashnod Flesh Mechanist, we've seen that one as well. Right, looks like we've seen everything on this one. Let's just have a scan over. Power Stone Fracture, yeah. Transmogrant Altar, yeah. Gix's Command, so we've seen all them. We've got a first here, a Trench Stalker. As long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn, Trench Stalker has Death Touch and Life Link. The Stone Brain. For two, we can tap Exile the Stone Brain, choose a card name, search target opponent's graveyard, hand and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Activate only as a sorcery. We've got Ashmod's Intervention. Till the end of the turn, target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains. When this creature dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, turn it to its owner's hand. Mishra Excavation Prodigy. Um, for haste, it, we've got one. For one mana, we can tap it. Discard a card, draw a card. Whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, add two mountain. This ability triggers only once each turn. We've seen Wing Commando. Uh, Rus Goliath and Tukasia's Dig Site. We've also seen Pristine Talisman. 
uh, we've got a Sardian Cliff Stomper. As long as it's your turn and you control four or more mountains, it gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of mountains you control. We've got a Fauna Shaman. For a forest, we can tap, discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. What else have we got? We've got a Penragon Strong Bull. For one, we can sacrifice an artifact. It gets plus one plus one until the end of the turn and deals one damage to each opponent. Keeper of the Cadence, um, Human Wizard. For three, put target artifact, instant or sorcery card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. We've got a Sarinth Great Worm. It's got Trample. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, create a tapped power stone token. We've got Mind's Eye for five. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may pay one. If you do, draw a card. Pretty sweet to get an extra draw. Epic Confrontation. Target creature you control gets plus one plus two until the end of the turn. It fights target creature you don't control. Also got Dwarven Forge Chanter, Ward Pay 2 Life, Prowess. So, yeah, if they want to attack us, they have to lose 2 life. Um, we've got Scrap Trawler. Whenever a Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser mana value. We've got a Surge Engine for 2. Artifact Creature Construct. It's a Defender. Um, for an island, it loses defender and gains. This creature can't be blocked. Um, for two and an island, surge engine becomes blue and has base power and toughness 5-4. Activate only if search engine doesn't have defender. And for four and two island, draw three cards. Activate only if search engine is blue and only once. Right, so it has to be all done on one turn. I'll right, get you. Mightstone's animation. Enchant artifact. When Mightstone's animation ends the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted artifact is a creature with base power and toughness 4 4 in addition to its other types. And what else have we got? Siege veteran. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control. Whenever another non token soldier you control dies, create a 1 1 colorless soldier artifact creature token. Right, there's only one card we haven't seen. Giant Cindermore. Trample, players can't gain life. Dinosaur Beast. Liberator. Urza's Battle Thopter. Legendary Artifact Creature. It's got Flash and Flying. You may cast colorless spells and artifact spells as though they had Flash. Whenever you cast a spell, if the amount of mana spent to cast that spell is greater than Liberator, Urza's Battle Thopter's power, put a plus one plus one counter on a Liberator. Got Curate, Surveil 2. Uh, that Surveil is look at the top cards of your library, then put any number of them in your graveyard and rest on top of your library in any order. And then we draw a card. We've also got Elsewhere Flask. When Elsewhere Flask enters the battlefield, draw a card. Um, sacrifice Elsewhere Flask. Choose a basic land type. Each land you control becomes that type until the end of the turn. Seeing the Hulking Metamorph. We've got another Urza Lord Protector. Lovely. Be nice if we could get the Mishra claimed by Gix as well. Um, so we've seen everything here. We're getting to that point now. Uh, Felden Roman Excavator. Haste. Uh, Felden Roman Excavator can't block. Whenever it is dealt damage, exile that many cards from the top of your library. Choose one of them. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. If we get a few um, hits where we don't get any new cards, uh, we will then just start opening packs of 10. Uh, Arablest Engineers. When they enter the battlefield, choose one. 
uh, deals one damage to any target. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. It gains trample and haste until the end of the turn. Or we can create a tap power stone. Mechanized warfare. If a red or artifact source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one instead. So we have got Gruesome Realization. Choose one, you draw two cards and you lose two life. Creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus one until the end of the turn. Gives me a bit of shambling gas um, kind of vibes there. Uh, disfigure. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. There we go, that's another kind of nice little debuff card. Uh, we've also got Cytanel. Stalwart, Elf Druid Soldier, we can tap an untapped artifact or creature you control, add one mana of any colour. Um, Platoon Dispenser, another one of those. Mind's Eye, we've got another one of those as well. Right, so everything here, we've got Dreams of Steel and Oil. Target opponent reveals their hand, you choose an artifact or creature card from it, then choose an artifact or creature card from their graveyard, exile the chosen cards. Draconic Destiny, Enchantment Aura. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has flying haste and um, for one mana, this creature gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. It's a dragon in addition to its other types and when an enchanted creature dies, return Draconic Destiny to its owner's hand. Hero of the Dunes. When Hero of the Dunes enters the battlefield, return target artifact or creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Creatures you control with mana value 3 or less get plus 1 plus 0. Also got Sword of the Meek. Equipped creature gets plus 1 plus 2. Equipped for a equipped cost of 2. Whenever a 1-1 one, one creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Sword of the Meek from your graveyard to the battlefield, then attach it to that creature. We've got another rare wild card. We're getting quite a lot of rare wild cards. It's going to help us fill out the cards that we need to make our decks. Um, look at that, we've got all of these cards at the moment. So, Painful Quandary. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player loses 5 life unless they discard a card. So this is the same, we're getting to the point where we are not drawing any new cards. Well, we've already had one of those. Uh, we'll do it to another 7 packs and if by then we're not getting any firsts or any new cards, um, we'll just start opening 10 packs. Yeah, so it's the same here. Taunus the Toymaker. Legendary creature, human artificer. Whenever you cast a beast or bird creature spell, you may copy it, except the copy is an artifact in addition to its other types. The copy becomes a token. Torcasia Digsite Mentor. Creatures you control have Vigilance and Tap Surveil 1. Um, it's a look at the top cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library. And for two, two forests, two plains and two islands, exile to cast your dig site mentor from your graveyard. Return any number of target artifact cards with total mana value 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. Sounds nasty if you can get that off, but it's going to take a lot of work. We've got a Battlefield Butcher. For 5 mana, we can tap. Each opponent loses 2 life. This ability costs 1 less to activate for each creature card in your graveyard. And... Root Wire Amalgam. For 5, um, we can get it in as a 5-5. Five, five. Prototype cost of one and a forest and comes in as a two three. For three and two forests, we can sacrifice the root wire al um, amalgam, create an XX colorless golem artifact creature token. 
where X is three times root wire amalgam's power, gains haste until the end of the turn. Activate Oni as a sorcery. Ooh, that sounds a bit nasty. We have got a coastal bulwark, bulwark, walk, um, artifact creature, it's a wall, We've got defender, it gets plus two plus zero as long as you control an island, and for two we can surveil for one. We've got another temporal anchor. Foundry Inspector, artifact spells you cast, cost one less to cast. We've got uh, another Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter. First here, Supply Drop. It's got Flash, when Supply Drop enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. For four mana, we can tap it and sacrifice it. We can draw a card. Gixian Puppeteer. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. When Gixian Puppeteer dies, return another target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Argoth Sanctum of Nature. So it's a uh, land. Um, Argos Sanctum of Nature enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary green creature. Tap and add a forest. Offer two and two forest. Tap. Create a 2-2 two, two green bear creature token. Then mill three cards. Activate only as a sorcery. And this melds with Titania, Voice of Gaia. Let's open up another single pack because we are still getting a few firsts here. Yep, there we go. Um, Machine Over Matter. This spell costs one less to cast if you control an artifact creature. Uh, return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. Fateful Handoff. Draw cards equal to the mana value of target artifact or creature you control. An opponent gains control of that permanent. Disciples of Gix. When Disciples of Gix enters the battlefield, search your library for up to three artifact cards, put them into your graveyard, then shuffle. Gix's Command. We've already got had one of those. Right, we're drawing a blank again. Sword of the Meek. We've had one of those. We've got a first over here. Heavyweight Demolisher for 7. It's got Menace, and at the beginning of your upkeep, tap Heavyweight Demolisher unless you pay 3. Unearth for 6 and 2 Mountains. That's an 8 6. Mystic Forge for 4. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast artifact spells and colder spells from the top of your library. Tap, pay 1 life, exile the top card of your library. Yep, yeah, we've got a mythic. First, Unleash Shell. Unleash Shell deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker and 2 damage to that permanent controller. We've got Mishra, Tamer of Makfawa. Permanents you control have Ward, Sacrifice a Permanent. Each artifact card in your graveyard has Unearth, One, Swamp and a Mountain. We've seen Scrap Trawler. Alright, we've seen all these. And we've seen that one. We're getting close. Well, I think we're getting close now for seeing quite a lot of duplicates. We've got almost 50% of the cards. Yep. Let's get to that point now. Worm Coil Engine. For 6, Death Touch Lifelink. When Worm Coil Engine dies, create a 3 3 Colorless Phyrexian Worm Artifact Creature Token with Death Touch and a 3 3 Colorless Phyrexian Worm Artifact Creature Token with Lifelink. And it comes in with 6 6. Wow. We've 
first over here, uh, Icor Wellspring enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield. Draw a card. Gixian Puppeteer. I'm going to open up 10 now and just look at the rare cards. So what have we got? We have got a Perennial Behemoth. You may play lands from your graveyard. Unearth for two forests. Comes in as a 2-7. We've got Hostile Negotiations, it's an instant card. Exile the top three cards of your library in a face down pile, then exile the top three cards of your library in another face down pile. Look at the cards in each pile, then turn a pile of your choice face up. An opponent chooses one of those piles, put that pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. You will lose three life. Harbin, Vanguard, Aviator. Flying, whenever you attack with five or more soldiers, Creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain flying until the end of the turn. We've got a Transmogrant's Crown Artifact Equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus zero. Whenever a equipped creature dies, draw a card. Equip two or a swamp. Goblin Child Belcher. Um, for, is that three? Tap, reveal cards from the top of your library to reveal land card. Um, Goblin Char Belcher deals damage equal to the number of non-land cards revealed this way to any target. If the revealed land card was a mountain, Goblin Char Belcher deals double that damage instead. Put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in any order. Alright, you up. Let's open up another 10. Oh, look at that. We've got quite a lot here. So, we've got Fade from History. Each player who controls an artifact or enchantment creates a 2-2 green bear creature token, then destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Uh, Drafana, Drafna, sorry, founder of Latnam, uh, for one and an island, return target artifact you control with its owner's hand. For three, we can tap, copy target artifact spell you control, the copy becomes a token. Uh, Journey is Kite, for three we can tap, Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Mishra's Command, um, it's a sorcery, choose two, choose target player, they may discard up to X cards, then they draw a card for each card discarded this way, or this spell deals X damage to target creature, or this spell deals X damage to target planeswalker, or this creature gets plus X plus zero and gains haste until the end of the turn. You can choose two of those, so that's pretty nasty. Um, Tukasia's Welcome. Whenever one or more creatures with mana value three or less enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. We have got a Chromatic Lantern. Lands you control have tap, add one mana of any colour. So we can tap and add one mana of any colour. Uh, defense grid each spell costs three more to cast except during its controller's turn there's a silex so this is the silex that the trying to figure out how to activate and um, for two plus two planes we can tap exile as a silex each player chooses six lands they control destroy all other permanents and um, activate only as a sorcery when Urza Silex is put into exile from the battlefield, you may pay two. If you do, search your library for a Planeswalker card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. We've got Sahili, um, Filigree Master, uh, Legendary Planeswalker. For plus one, we can scry one. You may tap an untapped artifact you control. If you do, draw a card. For minus two, create two one one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. They gain haste until the end of the turn. For minus four, you get an emblem with artifact creatures you control. Get plus one, plus one, and artifact spells you cost uh, cast cost one less to cast. Lovely. We've got some more firsts here. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger for seven. Um, Menace Lifelink Ward, pay life equal to Phyrex and Flesh Gorgas Power. Um, yeah. Prototype for 1 and 2 Swamp, and it comes in as a 3 3. Uh, Gwenna Eyes of Gear, 
Gaia, sorry. Um, tap, add two mana in any combination of colours. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells or activate abilities of a creature or creature card. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power 5 or greater, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia and untap it. We've got Kyla's Reconstruction. Look at the top 7 cards of your library, put up to X artifact and or creature cards with mana value 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of the, your library in a random order. Portal to Phyrexia for 9 mana. When Portal to Phyrexia enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices 3 creatures. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. We've got a Mythic Rare Wild card, an Aether Flux Reservoir. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain 1 life for each spell you've cast this turn. Pay 50 life. Aether Flux Reservoir deals 50 damage to any target. Wow. Are you ever going to have 50 life though? That's the question. So here we go. We've got two Steel Seraphs here. We're getting, must be getting close now to um, getting all the duplicates now. Blade Coil Serpent X6. Artifact Creature Serpent. When it enters the battlefield for each island spent to cast it, draw a card. Um, when it enters the battlefield for each swamp spent to cast it, each opponent discards a card. Uh, for each mountain spent to cast it, it gets plus one plus zero and gains trample and haste until the end of the turn. Uh, Myril Shield of Argive. During your turn, your opponents can cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Whenever Myril Shield of Argive attacks, Create X11 colourless soldier artifact creature tokens where X is the number of soldiers you control. We have um, unlocked our vault here as well, which is good news. We have got Brotherhood's End. Choose one. Brotherhood's End deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker, or destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less. Mesmeric Orb. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent controller mills a card. We've got a cloud key. As cloud key enters the battlefield, choose artifact, creature, enchantment, instant or sorcery. Spells you cast of these chosen type cost one less to cast. We've got per Precursor Golem. When it enters the battlefield, create two 3-3 three, three Coldest Golem Artifact Creature Tokens. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only a single Golem, that player copies that spell for each other Golem that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those Golems. Look at that. And nothing else is new, so we've pretty much got everything. We're just getting the duplicates now. Um, let's have a look. We've got Psychosis Crawler. Power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Hercules Final Meditation. As long as it's not your turn, this spell costs three more to cast. Return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. End the turn. Exile all spells and abilities from the stack. Including this card, the player whose turn it is discards down to their maximum hand size, damage wears off, and this turn and until end of turn effects end. Urza, Prince of Krug. Artifact creatures you control get plus two plus two. For six mana, create a token that's a copy of target artifact you control, except it's a 1 1 soldier creature in addition to its other types. We've got Sundering Titan for eight. When Sundering Titan enters or leaves the battlefield, choose a land of each basic land type, then destroy those lands. Uh, it comes in as a 7-10. Uh, we've got Urza's Command. Choose two. Creatures you don't control get minus two, minus zero until the end of the turn. Create a tapped Power Stone token. Create a tap zero zero Colors Construct Artifact Creature token. With this creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. And then, or we can scry one and then draw a card. OK, 
Okay, let's take a look. We've got Black Blade Reforged. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. Equip legendary creature for three or equip for seven. Fortified Beachhead. As Fortified Beachhead enters the battlefield, you may reveal a soldier card from your hand. Um, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you reveal the soldier card this way or you control a soldier. Uh, tap to add um, planes or island for five. We can tap. Soldiers you control get plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Lovely. And the last ten card there, uh, packs. We have got... Astral Cornucopia XXX um, Astral Cornucopia enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. Choose a colour, add one mana of that colour for each charge counter on Astral Cornucopia. Caged Sun enters the battlefield, choose a colour. Creatures you control of the chosen colour get plus one plus one. Whenever a land's ability causes you to add one or more mana of the chosen colour, add one additional mana of that colour. So there we go. We're going to try some of these golden packs. Um, we've got 33 rares, 15 mythic rares. So we've got enough to um, see what's what. Let's open up 15 gold packs. We'll open up the first five. And then we will just open the last ten. Right? Oh, so we get to Fairy Temporal Pilgrim. So that's another one of the cards. Uh, whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. For zero, draw a card. For minus two, create a 2-2 two, two blue spirit creature token with vigilance. And whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. For minus 12, target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to its owner's hand. Uh, then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control in its owner's library. Right, that's the first. Um, we've got Shadow. All oh, right, we've got um, some rares from some other sets. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Enduring Angel. Yeah. So basically, we're just filling out our collections from other sets now as well. So, right here, we've got Alchemist Gambit. We've seen that before. Oh, it's our first, apparently. Clave cost of four, two island, and a mountain. Take an extra turn after this one. During that turn, damage can't be prevented. The beginning of that turn's end step, you will lose the game. Exile, Alchemist's Gambit. So we can cast this spell for its cleave cost. If you do, remove the words in square brackets. Got another Sauron. Well, that's nice. A cemetery Prowler. Lovely. So these are just filling out our rares and mythics from previous sets. Anything that we haven't got. Over the top, it's a first. Um, each player reveals a number of cards from the top of their library. Equal to the number of non-land permanents they control. Um, puts all permanent cards that they revealed this way onto the battlefield. And puts the rest into their graveyard. Old stick fingers. Um, what have we got here? Another Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim. Hall of Tagsin. Tap and add a colourless mana. For one, we can tap and add one mana of any colour. For four, we can tap and create a tap power stone token. Um, we're getting quite a lot of... Yeah, we're getting some of the newer set as well. Yeah, Draconic Destiny. I remember that one. Well, let's just open these and see what we get for the rest. Uh, anything new? Or are we just getting... Yeah, we're just getting ones that are filling up our collection. We've got another one of those, which is nice. Another Urza Silex. Oh, we've got a new one here, by the looks of it. Uh, Lauren of the Third Path. Vigilance. Uh, and there's a battlefield destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. You and target opponent each draw a card. Luxia Giada's Gift. like that as well. Uh, 
Queen Kayla Bin Krug. Um, for four, we can tap, discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards. You may choose an artifact or creature card with mana value one you discarded this way. Then do the same for artifact or creature cards with mana values two and three. Return those cards to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. Mishra's Foundry. Awaken the Woods. Create X11 Green Forest Dryad Land Creature Tokens. They're affected by summoning sickness. Okie doke. Ah, there we go. Mishra claimed by Gix. Whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of attacking creatures. If Mishra claimed by Gix and a creature named Phyrexian Dragon Engine are attacking and you both own and control them, exile them, then meld them into Mishra lost to Phyrexia, it enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. And Mishra lo lost to Phyrexia. Whenever Mishra lost to Phyrexia enters the battlefield or attacks, choose three. Target opponent discards two cards. Mishra deals three damage to any target. Destroy target artifact or planeswalker. Creatures you control gain menace and trample until the end of the turn. Creatures you don't control get minus one minus one until the end of the turn. Or create two tapped power stone tokens. And you get to pick three of those. That's mega value. Right, so we're getting ones that we've already had in previous sets, but we're filling out the rest of the... Um, yeah, so this melds with Mishra. Um, so we're filling out the extra copies that we need. Oh, this is the first. We need t t Titania, Voice of Gaia. Uh, reach, whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain two life. The beginning of your upkeep, if there are four more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and control Titania, Voice of Gaia and a land named Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, exile them, then meld them into Titania, Gaia Incarnate. And Titania, Gaia Incarnate, it's got Vigilance, Reach, Trample and Haste. Titania, um, Power and Toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. When Titania enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And for three and a forest, put four plus one plus one counters on target land you control. Becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Clear Champion. That's first. Clear Champion enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it for each forest double forest spent to cast it when clear champion enters the battlefield choose up to two other target creatures you control for each planes planes spent to cast clear champion put a plus one plus one counter on each of them we've got another urza lord protector uh yeah Another cemetery prowler, that's good. Yep, we're filling out the rest of our collection, which is really good. Platoon dispenser, sweet. I'm really liking these gold packs, by the way. Yep. Cityscape leveller. We've just seen that earlier on as well. Two more after this. Oh, we've got a couple of firsts here. Brushland. Um, yeah, it's another one of the pain lands. Great, I'm glad we got that. Uh, Diabolic Intent as an additional cost to cast this spell sacrifice a creature search your library for a card put that card in your hand then shuffle 
Uh, another Lanawar waste, so we've got those as well. And oh, Battlefield Forge, another one of the pain lands, which is good. Let's see. Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia, Soul Partition, Instant Exile Target, Non Land Permanent, for as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. A spell cast by an opponent this way costs two more to cast. We've got another Blade Coil Serpent. And our last pack, what are we going to get? Uh, let's see. Curse of Shaken Faith. Uh, Ascendant Pack Leader. River Tears Ascendancy. Underground River. Lovely, that's another one of our pain lands that we needed. Cemetery Desecrator and Arlen the Pack Thor. Delicate balance. Lovely. But it's been upset. So guys, we have also got a code that we can claim um, at the store. If you type in play bro hit enter you will get another three packs of the brothers war so we'll go and open those now and we'll see what we get i think we'll have everything though um we've got 78 percent of the cards so chances are we just filling out the rest of our collection and by the time we get to the end of the mastery pass we should have a hundred percent um what you call it, 100% of the cards. And all the time we are increasing our vault progress, we need to pick up one mythic rare wildcard, two rare wildcards, and three uncommon wildcards. Kyla's reconstruction. There we go. Let's just collect these as well. So we've got 35 rares, 16 mythic rares, and we're now going to add these to our pool as well so there we have it guys we've got a vault progress of 32.7 percent and for any new cards um that we need for crafting decks when we take a look um we will have another 37 rare cards to fill out the cards that we need some mythic rare cards we can fill out as well so wow yeah we in um we in good stead for completing our collection so thank you very much for joining me on this episode of magic the gathering arena we are going to be creating some more um deck deck lists and challenging the um the ranked ladder so yeah every time a new set comes out we tend to do the meta decks at the moment, the meta deck is Mono White Aggro, followed by Selesny Enchantment, Mono Black Aggro, Esper Legends, Rakdos Midrange, Range, Jeskai Control, Mono Black Control, Mono Red Aggro. That may change in the coming days, so when it settles down a little bit, that is when we will continue to um, play around with the meta decks. So until next time, guys, thank you very much for your attention. Give me a like and a sub if you enjoyed the content. And until next time, that's it from me, and I will see you guys on the flip side.